We will now hear from the Honorable Michael Mukasey, who served as the United States 81st Attorney General until 2009. Mr. Mukasey was appointed to the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York in 1988. Judge Mukasey has spoken in support of the Iranian people and has successfully fought injustices in this regard. Please give a warm welcome to Judge Michael Mukasey. Thank you, very, thank you very much. Um, it is a great honor, a great honor to share this podium with Vice President Pence, Senator Lieberman, Senator Torricelli, General Conway, and a great honor. And a great honor as well to appear before people like you who are as committed as you are to achieving freedom in Iran. And to coming to bear witness to the threat that the current Iranian regime presents to the Iranian people and to the world. You know, the two months since Ibrahim Raisi took office as president of Iran have been liberating in a sense, although it's only in a bitterly ironic sense we can now feel liberated from any uncertainty about what path the mullahs who put him in power will follow in the internationally. And we can feel liberated also from any hope that the Iranian people can expect any improvement in their situation under the current regime. Those dreams are gone, if they ever existed. The selection of a person like Raisi who participated directly in the massacre of thousands in 1988 to be president should have been enough to show that the Supreme Leader, Khamenei, and the rest of the regime do not care how they are perceived by the outside world and are prepared to resort to any means, including mass murder, to achieve their goal, their goal of imposing their view of proper religious law on the region and on the, as much of the world as possible. We've witnessed an escal since he took office, we've witnessed, witnessed an ex ex escalation of threats, missile launches, attacks by unmanned aerial vehicles, and other instruments of destruction, and an approach to negotiations under the ill-fated JCPOA that can only be described as toying with the negotiations, toying with the concept of, uh, of a nuclear-free Iran and simply running the clock while work proceeds toward enriching uranium at ever higher levels and using ever more advanced centrifuges to speed the process. This ongoing activity simply confirms what became obvious with the public disclosure in 2018 of the archive of the Iranian nuclear program that was seized during a daring raid by Israel. The documents and other records in that archive proved that the mullah's claim that Iran's nuclear program was peaceful was then and always had been a lie and continues to be a lie. Those records make plain that the entire basis of Iran's participation in the JCPOA was a fraud and that Iran has been working on developing weapons without interruption since the beginning of its nuclear program in the 1980s. Meanwhile, Raisi has remained true to his record and has added to it by placing an increasing share of Iran's, of Iran's faltering economy in the hands of, the, of the, the IRGC. There have been demonstrations in Iran, not just over, over the political condition there, but also over water shortages, if you can believe it, um, and other 
other shortages of other essential items. And the demonstrators have not blamed the people who impose sanctions on Iran. They've blamed the regime. Meanwhile, the character of the regime has continued to play out in courtrooms around the world. The trial of Asadola Assadi concluded this year in a Belgian court. Assadi was an Iranian diplomat convicted of using his diplomatic cover to fly a bomb from Iran to Europe that was to have been exploded at a free Iran rally in Paris in June of 2018. That bomb was intended to kill Mrs. Rajavi and other dignitaries who were present, as well as many freedom-loving Iranians who were gathered there, and some of you may have been among them. The guilty verdict in that case showed that an accredited Iranian diplomat, an official international representative of the regime, had dared to use the cover of his diplomatic status to carry a bomb from Iran to hand it over to two accomplices, teaching them how to operate it, and then checking with them to see how the operation was going. And more recently than that, the trial of Hamid Nouri for crimes committed during the 1988 massacre has been proceeding in Sweden and has featured electronically transmitted video testimony by residents of Ashraf III in Albania who witnessed and suffered from Nouri's crimes. Nouri was, was a member of the IRGC who worked as a prosecutor and an active member of the Death Commission in Gohardash prison in 1988 when, when the executions were at their highest. His job included, according to the Swedish, Swedish prosecutor, selecting which prisoners should be put before the commission, the death commission that decided which of them would be executed, and then arranging the executions. Five members of MEK who live in Ashraf III testified to Nuri's crimes by video conference from a courtroom in Tirana, Albania. Crimes that included imprisonment of some of them, as well as the murder of members of their families. Their testimony also implicates the current president of Iran, Ibrahim Raisi, who in 2009 expressed the view that whoever is with the MEK, regardless of what he has done, should be condemned to death. Just yesterday, the court in Sweden decided that because the potential testimony of witnesses at Ashraf III could be of crucial importance to the outcome of the trial, and that was their view, the trial itself is going to be moved to Tirana for two weeks so that live testimony can be taken from witnesses from Ashraf III. This is a significant development. The world, and in particular our own government, should not be paralyzed by the variety and enormity of the acts the, the mullahs have committed. The response should be unrelenting pressure and an open willingness to deal with individual members of the regime, including Raisi himself, in whatever forum becomes available, just as the Swedes are dealing with Nuri by putting him on trial for his crimes. It is through individual people, after all, like Raisi and Nuri and others, that the regime commits its crimes. If individual people get the message that they will be pursued and prosecuted and punished, then not only will justice be done, but also many may be deterred from committing those crimes. And we should not shrink from drawing explicit analogies between what these people are doing to a group within their own population and classic genocide. Raisi has pronounced a death sentence on all members of MEK, who number in the tens of thousands, both in Iran and elsewhere. When Winston Churchill spoke of the Nazis' program to eradicate the Jews, he said, we are speaking of a crime without a name. That crime came to have a name, genocide, and it is a name that has been attached to what the Tutsi did to the Hutu in Rwanda, it is a name that we can properly use when discussing what the current regime has done, is doing, and wishes to continue to do to members of MEK. Of course, the only assured way to end this conduct is to end this regime, to finish 
what Senator Lieberman once referred to as the unfinished business of the 20th century. Con continued pressure through sanctions, continued refusal to be fooled by the regime's dishonesty about its nuclear program and pursuit of individual criminals can help. Those are the tools that we have, and we should not hesitate to use them. There is an alternative to the current regime that's readily available. NCRI, headed by Mrs. Rajavi, has has shown that it has both the program and the organizational capability to provide the leadership that will, will give Iran a democratic alternative to the current tyranny. A secular government where the rights of all men and women are recognized, a government that will not pursue nuclear weapons or seek to destabilize its neighbors. A government that will proceed according to a 10-point program that Mrs. Rajabi has already outlined. That is yet an additional reason why there should be no hesitation to get rid of the current regime. What succeeds it will not be chaos. It will be an orderly transition toward the tradition that has illuminated Iran for, for hundreds and hundreds of years and that, that the Iranian people are proud of. It is a tradition that will be carried on by the people, hopefully the people in this room, and by NCRI. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge McKaysey.